Hi, my name is Chrissy Monroe, and most of you guys know me from VH Barnes Love and Hip Hop New York Season 5. But what a lot of you guys don't know is that I am a survivor of domestic violence. When I left Love and Hip Hop New York, I kind of went from bad to worse. I met a younger guy. I met a guy that was 13 years younger than me um, at a charity function. He was very handsome, very charming. He was 13 years younger than I was. Um, things progressed very quickly. I knew he had just came home from prison. I, I'm not judgmental. I've dated other guys that have been in jail. You know, I could have been in jail for something. You know, no one is immune. So I didn't judge him based off of that. He was so nice and wonderful and was at my house all the time. I felt sorry for him because he was staying at his cousin's house on the couch. And, you know, it was a couple a couple kids running around and, you know, he didn't, he didn't want to stay there anymore. Could he come stay with me? Of course, I said yes. I mean, we were already sexually involved, and that was wonderful. Um, he gave me a lot of attention, and I loved the companionship. You know, me just coming off of a show as big as Love & Hip Hop, my whole life had changed. And I had so many people coming at me that wanted just to be around me, that didn't know the real Chrissy. So he kind of came around when I needed a friend. But then it started with the emotional abuse. And, when, you know, I would come home, and he would be sitting on the couch, and I'd be like, hey, babe. He'd be like, leave me alone. Don't talk to me right now. I'd be like, well, what did I do wrong? Get the fuck out of my face. So I was, you know, I started feeling like, damn, what did I do? You start really driving yourself crazy thinking maybe you had said something to this person. Uh, maybe something's wrong with you. And then he started denying sex from me. So then I started to feel unattractive. I didn't realize it was emotional abuse because I had never been through this before with a man um, until I learned and got educated about it. So that was the first, the first, um, inkling in the first phase of this. The second was the verbal abuse. I remember clearly we were driving to his cousin's house in the South Bronx. I had my convertible top down. We were driving and he just flipped on me. I mean, we were just having a great time and all of a sudden, I mean, it was like schizophrenic, just flipped on me. Like, you fucking stupid white bitch, motherfucker, da da da. Like, like somebody I'd never seen before. I was shocked. I just stayed quiet because I didn't know where this came from. I don't know what I did to deserve it. I was just verbally assaulted, like to the utmost. If you could talk about ghetto, like ghetto to the tenth power, ignorant, fuck you, filthy, dirty, white bitch, motherfucker, cunt, da da filth. I mean, and I'm just like chilling, enjoying my day. I'm driving my car, like where did this come from? It was crazy. We got to his cousin's house. I sat on the couch, he went in the bathroom, and I immediately just busted out crying. I, I was in such shock. When I got up to leave, I was going to leave his ass there. When I got up to leave, it was, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I don't know why I did that. I'm just, I'm just having a bad day. It's not your fault. I won't ever do it again. I apologize. When, when you're in this type of mindset, you tend to just want to believe that he's going to not do it again. You want to believe that he's going to change. You want to believe that. He's that good person that you kind of fell in love with in the beginning. You don't see what he's actually doing to you. You kind of block that out. So, of course, it happened again. I guess I had said something. I don't even remember what it was. Something that he didn't like. And just, boom, punched me in my face. Bloody my nose. I had never had a bloody nose in my life. But I had blood squirting all over the car. Um, I just literally stopped the car and put it in park in the middle of the highway. I didn't pull over, I paused deep in and went around, and I just sat there screaming. And the sick part is, he was like, stop, stop. He's trying to look for napkins to try to cover up the blood. 
He didn't care about hitting me. He didn't give a fuck about punching me in my face. So I knew I had a real problem since that day. That's when the fear really kicked in. And it's kind of emotional for me to talk about because this wasn't that long ago. But needless to say, it got worse and worse. And I could not get him out of my home. I asked him to leave several times. I threatened to call the police. I threatened to call his parole officer. And the mind state I was in, getting beaten on verbally, mentally, uh, physically, almost on a daily basis, you know, he wanted my life. He wanted to take over everything that I had. Um, it was disgusting. The disrespect was out of control. Um, but I know I've always been a fighter. And, I, you know, whenever I would fight back, I got beat up worse. My truth is bonded. He knocked my, he chipped my tooth. I had to get that fixed last summer. I have permanent hearing damage in my left ear. Um, and just the mental scars are something that is never going to go away. I said, listen, you really need to move. This is not working out. He was even sleeping on the couch by this time because I didn't want him to touch me. But he would even come into the room and rape me when he wanted to have sex against my will. I told him, I don't want to have sex with you. He would still rip my clothes off, just force himself on me. It was the most disgusting thing I've ever encountered. Um, so, you know, he used the parole card all the time. Bitch, you're playing with my freedom. I have nowhere to go. You knew that when, when, you, when I moved in here, you knew I ain't got nowhere to stay, bitch. You call parole. You playing with my fucking freedom. You want to die. Da, 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 da. So, um, I pray to God, I pray to God, I pray to God, please just let this man get hit by a buzz, you know, because I couldn't take it anymore. The worst beating, we had went to a red carpet event, it was around Christmas time, on the way home, he just got removed, and he, he had grabbed my cell phone out of my hand and threw it out the window. He was driving my car, which I didn't want him driving my car, he had a suspended license, but he felt entitled, like it was his. Um, like I said, he tried to force his way into everything that I own. I got out, we were in the city by Park Avenue. I got out, I had no shoes on because I had just taken my heels off the car. I got out with bare feet and got the phone off the sidewalk and he left me there with no shoes, you know, on the sidewalk and he pulled off. And I had to call and beg him to come back and get me. How humiliating is this? He's driving my car, something that I gave the note on and, and earned and worked hard for, and was going to leave me out outside. With, my purse was even in the car because I jumped out so fast to get the phone. No money, nothing. He liked to humiliate me in public. You know, he always thought I thought I was better than people. Um, I'm such a star, but I'm washed up. I'm ugly. I'm old. Nobody gives a fuck about me, blah, blah, blah. This was every day. Any opportunity he could do, get to try to embarrass me in public is what he would do. So I got the phone, he finally came back and got me. And I knew to keep my mouth shut in the car the entire ride home, or I was gonna get, gonna get hit. We got home and I went in my room, whatever. And I got so tired of him taking my car from me because he would sometimes take my car and leave for two or three days and just take my car and go. And I would miss meetings, I would miss work, things like that. And then he'd come back, like, everything was fine. Throw my keys on the table, like, it's his car. So, you know, um, that night, when he threw my phone out the window, I said, enough is enough. I'm not letting him take my car again. I went outside, I took the car, I parked it about three blocks away, because I have a designated parking spot. He's like, I'm leaving. I'm going to Coney Island. I said, all right. He goes outside and sees the car is not there. He came back in the house enraged, enraged. I mean, he beat me like a man that night, threw me to the floor and was just punching me, kicking me. And I was literally in a ball, balled up. My hands were black and blue for protecting my face. I had black eyes. I had a cracked rib. Um, Numerous injuries, bleeding all over the place, um, bruises all over my entire body. And he had no remorse. Um, he went and laid down and went to sleep. I'm sorry, I'm trying to like not cry. The next morning I was supposed to film. 
And I had to send my girlfriend. I said, listen, I can't make it to the filming. Something happened. She said, what? Because I think she had a feeling she's been my best friend for 15 years. I sent her a picture of my face. I said, keep this in case something happens to me. So she's like, what the fuck? Like, so a few hours later, I got the police at my door. And they, they're like, you know, are you okay? Someone called the police. And I knew it was her. I knew it was. Um, it was like, they were like 10 feet. Standing there in my row with a black eye and my face is swollen. I got knots in my head. Acting like everything's okay. <laughs> because I'm in so much fear of this animal I have living in my home that I was too afraid to say anything and press charges. They forced themselves into my home. He hid in my back closet. I have a walk-in closet, Mr. Marcus. He hid in a section of my closet, and they literally did not find him by luck. And they're like, please, are you sure you don't want to press charges? I said, no, I'm okay. But I was afraid, as most victims are. I kept praying for somebody, God, please take this man from my life. He didn't come home that night. Phone wasn't, couldn't get him on the phone, nothing. Um, I had a feeling something had happened to him. So his homeboy calls me like the next morning, like, you heard from him? I said, no. I said, but he said he was with you. He's like, yeah, I was, but um, he left.